Okay, well, it is six o'clock on the dot central time. Hope everyone can hear me. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Sherry Ziller. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at the Northwest Indiana Regional Development Authority. It is my privilege to welcome uh, you all to a virtual public meeting. We are here uh, to review and discuss the transit development process surrounding the Ridge Road Station in Munster to be built on the new Westlake Corridor uh, commuter train line. I am joined tonight by Dustin Anderson, the town manager of Munster, uh, and by members of the RDA's uh, planning team to discuss the specifics of the potential development around the Ridge Road Station. So before I turn the um, virtual microphone over to Dustin, let me, let me just begin by setting the stage for this process. A little bit of background. Um, the RDA was given the task um, as part of its establishing legislation back in 2005. Uh, to assist in developing and furthering commuter rail in Northwest Indiana as part of a strategy to increase the connectivity with Chicago uh, and grow the economy of our region. Uh, the state provided funding um, and in 2015, the 2015 and also the 2017 legislative sessions made it very clear that the RDA was to take the lead uh, in the financing of the rail expansion. So, um, further, also in 2017, the state tasked the RDA with assisting the uh, municipalities in which the stations were situated and provided um, funding mechanisms to help in the planning for and the financing of their own transit-oriented development. Uh, so as we're moving uh, through this slideshow here, I think we're ready to get to the um, planning entities slide. Uh, so during the past two years, uh, the RDA has been meeting with our station area community leaders to understand kind of their own visions and planning concepts for their TOD. Uh, the RDA has pulled together a planning team to assist in these efforts. Our team consists of uh, MKSK, who you will hear from a lot tonight, uh, KPMG and Policy Analytics, and we will all be available for the Q&A uh, portion of the program. Uh, the virtual meeting tonight is the next step um, in the process of bringing what we call a, it's a unique set of development tools into play to help grow the Northwest Indiana economy and um, further establish high quality of life for, for our region. Uh, and just a little uh, update uh, on the rail project, specifically the Westlake Corridor project. I'm sure many of you have heard. Um, on October 28th, the Federal Transit Administration signed a grant uh, providing the funding uh, to make the Westlake Corridor Project a reality. So uh, the Northwest Indiana Commuter Transportation District, NICTI, the um, uh, rail operator, they're already working with their design and construction teams to begin the uh, four plus years of work to make that Westlake line um, operational. The RDA though, um, in convening this meeting, I would say, I would say we're moving forward on our own um, separate mission, which is to ensure that that the best options for development around the station areas are considered, agreed to by the communities, um, eventually funded, and then implemented, put into place. Um, so the role of the RDA, uh, you can see what's on the screen, uh, but really the the role of the RDA is to help communities create more attractive, secure neighborhoods. And as we navigate through this process, we are enabling our communities to compete for the young professionals that work in Chicago and to make our communities more attractive um, for businesses and for people who will work in Indiana. The RDA um, wants to work with you to strengthen your community, to, en um, to enhance what you love about it, to enhance um, your livability. So whatever your interest is, whether you're a resident, a developer, a business owner, um, stewards of our community, we are very grateful for your willingness to um, participate in this conversation tonight uh, and look forward to making this a very successful development process. Um, the RDA wants to continue to address your concerns um, to help you better understand the coming economic development and social benefits and to relay the message that TDD complements the economic development and growth path of your community. So with that said, I will hand it over to Dustin Anderson, um, Munster Town Manager, to say a few words on uh, the TDDs and the Munster Ridge Road Station. But again, 
uh, I want to thank you all for your time and participation tonight. So Mr. Anderson, over to you. Let me unmute myself here. Sure. Uh, thanks, Sherry. I'm not going to steal uh, the thunder from MKSK. Uh, they've got a whole team of people smarter than me that are going to walk you through a very detailed process on how we got to where we're at. Uh, and then more importantly, open it up to the feedback that you, the participants have. But I do want to say thank you to the RDA and their team at MKSK and KPMG. Uh, throughout the process so far, the town has had the opportunity to work with these folks. And I feel that our comments have been heard and incorporated meaningfully, right? That's that's really what this is about. And uh, to date, that's how we have felt from a staff level. Uh, and I wanna make sure we know what we're talking about tonight really quick. And I'm sure they'll get into greater detail into this, but the TDD, the Transit Development District, isn't a change in zoning. It's not eminent domain for economic development. No one's gonna take anything from anybody. Or, nor is it a partnership with a, any individual developer. What it really is, it's a way for the town to have a say in how the area around a station area might develop in the future and share in the benefit of that potential development, right? So, uh, at an example, the, the funds generated in any particular district, like, so say, Ridge and Manor, can only be used within that district. It doesn't go into a giant pot somewhere else and then get distributed by some kind of metric that we don't know. It's a line on a balance sheet. Uh, and that there's a corresponding line on that balance sheet that can only be spent within where these lines are in every respective community. So it's very clean from an accounting perspective and it's very open uh, for uh, potential, right? So if there's improvements that need to be made to the streets or infrastructure or enhancements for the general public, the town will have some additional tools available to meet those needs of our community. Uh, and tonight we have the opportunity to hear more of feedback about this process from you, the public. And based on our experiences, like I said, I'm confident that your thoughts will be seriously considered and incorporated in a meaningful way. Uh, the process is stronger for your involvement and the outcomes will be more meaningful with your feedback. So uh, I'm looking forward to a great presentation. Uh, and with that, I will let the pros take over. Thanks, Dustin. Um, uh, for everybody uh, in the audience, <clears throat> my name is Eric Lucas and I'm a principal with MKSK. We're an urban planning and landscape architecture uh, studio. Um, We've been working alongside the RDA, um, KPMG, and Policy Analytics now for a number of months, um, and also with every community that will, um, you know, be uh, a part of the West Lake Corridor as well as the South Shore Double Track Project to um, evaluate these areas and and really talk uh, through the the concepts of transit development districts. Um, Dustin gave me a great intro here because a lot of the content that I wanted to, to um, uh, make you familiar with um, was, was also in part of Dustin's uh, speaking um, uh, remarks. But I will kind of start out at a high level and just remind everybody in the audience sort of the bigger picture, the context here, that the regional significance of this project is, is, um, is uh, massive. Um, the investment that not only will be coming from the public sector, but the private sector is, is obviously very significant for Northwest Indiana and really uh, helps to, to place Northwest Indiana on a growth trajectory. Um, next slide, please. And um, this is uh, evident not only throughout the, the entire project, but when you look at each line, the South Shore double track line, 25 miles uh, of project area here, numerous communities, a part of that uh, $420 million worth of uh, uh, public infrastructure that would be leveraged for private investment later along down the road. And also, obvious, the obvious uh, significance here is to link to Chicago in, in a, a fundamental uh, connectivity uh, fashion. Uh, next slide, please. And then the, uh, the West Lake line is also uh, a key component of this strategy. Uh, a shorter segment of track, obviously, a new track, nine miles. And as Sherry mentioned, the groundbreaking just recently occurring um, in October, um, in late October, uh, but in, on this line, $852 million worth of public investment to really provide that overall connectivity. Next slide. And what you see here is just sort of the overall scope of, of the investment 
that really then uh, allows communities, uh, next slide please, to um, really embrace the kind of growth that can happen according to how a community wants to grow. As Dustin mentioned, we work um, diligently with the uh, communities to, to really put on, uh, uh, put, to be much more aware of your goals uh, of how to grow. And so as we do that, we understand um, with this public investment, there will be private investment. And you can see uh, across the state line how similar public investments have translated to private investment in different communities. And, and the key, um, we won't go through all the, all the data here, but the key to, to point out is that communities grow at different rates and they grow according to their own goals. And so to the degree that uh, Munster um, has aspirations for growth around the Ridge Road Station, those can be implemented as part of the investment tools in this uh, TDD infrastructure. Next slide, please. And so as a, a bit of an agenda, what we'd wanna cover tonight are a really high level um, sort of primer about what transit development districts are. Uh, we'll talk about um, then what our process has been to arrive at uh, the boundary that we wanna share out this evening. And then we'll get into um, specifics about the town of Munster, um, the current conditions, uh, the qualities of the community that are significant and how that has translated into uh, the specific boundary for Munster Ridge Road Station as a draft boundary. So with that, um, you can move to the next slide, please. There's also a, a number of ways in which you can interact um, throughout this presentation. Um, there's a Q&A um, uh, box uh, embedded in the Zoom platform. Feel free to uh, jot down your questions there. We're going to attempt to answer all the questions that um, are submitted this evening. Uh, please keep those questions appropriate for the audience. Uh, we do wanna make sure that we get to the questions that you have for us. Um, and we'll, we'll do our best to keep our presentation to about 45 minutes so that we can leave about another 45 minutes at the end for Q&A here. Um, and then um, there will also be pop-up boxes that you'll notice, you've probably seen those already on the screen. We wanna do some live polling tonight to learn a little bit about you and some of the immediate feedback you might have. And um, for uh, those who aren't able to attend or you may wanna see this uh, again, we are recording uh, this presentation. You'll be able to find that recording on our new website, which has just been launched. It's www.nwitdd.com. And uh, yes, thanks for the prompt there. Um, and in addition to um, this recording being on the website, you'll be able to see a lot more information and background about the process on the website. And you'll be able to see um, the res uh, some of the Q&A that we have here this evening. You'll have additional opportunities to take polls. And you'll also be able to uh, view um, static materials of this presentation. Um, so you can move to the next slide. Um, and so we'll start off by talking a little bit about um, what we call the TDD basics, transit development districts. That is what TDD stands for. And as, as Dustin and Sherry both mentioned, this is really about promoting your goals for economic development, your goals for growth, things that as a community you have already begun to plan. And that's really what we're uh, attempting to, to, uh, to capture in this process. We wanna make sure that as this public investment occurs, that the corresponding boundary that creates this transit development district really adheres to your aspirations as a community. So it really complements what you would like to see and how you would grow. And you'll see in a moment how we've uh, contemplated your, your own planning um, activities that have been conducted previously in, in Munster to, to arrive at this boundary. Uh, next, uh, next slide, please. And so as Dustin mentioned, um, we always find it's really helpful to re remind folks what a TDD is and, and what a TDD is not. So a transit development district is a half mile area. Um, it's about 320 acres and it's really an economic development district that will ultimately get approved by the state budget committee. And this is an effort, as Sherry mentioned, to really uh, provide economic lift for Northwest Indiana. And um, it is formed through a lot of in-depth analysis and a lot of work with the community. 
it is not, as Dustin mentioned, uh, a way to change zoning. Uh, it's not a comprehensive plan. Uh, this isn't eminent domain. It's not specific to a particular realtor. It is really focused on your goals and it's a boundary that uh, sort of ensures that those goals can, can be uh, promoted in a more uh, diligent fashion. Next slide, please. And so, um, as I just mentioned, a transit development district is one contiguous shape. Um, and you'll see they're not uh, perfect shapes. Uh, they're very interesting shapes, 320 acres. Um, so you can see on the screen here, just for reference, the dashed circle is 320 acres, about a half mile area. And uh, what you'll also see though, is that same 320 acres can be arrayed across different geometries uh, to really capture the kind of growth areas that you as a community have expressed interest in capturing. And so this is a, a template, an example of what that shape could look like. We'll obviously get into a specific shape here for Bridge Road. Next slide, please. Um, and as um, Dustin and Sherry mentioned, this is an economic development tool that'll um, help the, the town grow in a manner that it is um, wishing to grow. So this allows us to capture the incremental growth and not only local income tax, but also property tax that can be reinvested within the same boundary. So what, what grows in this boundary is reinvested in this boundary specific to this station area. Next slide, please. And that's, <clears throat> and that's exactly the, the concept here. And further to that point, the local control is, is maintained in terms of zoning and land use how a community grows is according to the, the community's uh, own planning and ultimate authority with um, zoning and land use will maintain in the control of, of the town. Next slide, please. And so, as we've mentioned before, um, that the function of a TDD, the Transit Development District, is to really provide an area in which revenue can be captured for reinvestment. Um, it is similar, very similar, if you're familiar with the concept of a tax increment finance district, a TIF district, it's very similar to a TIF district in that, again, as an economic development uh, tool, we're able to capture revenues and we're able to reinvest those revenues. Now, where there could be opportunities for a TIF and a TDD to overlap, and in those cases, uh, the RDA will be working individually with each municipality municipality to arrive at an understanding for how those revenues are split so that the TIF obligations are always met. Next slide, please. And so as part of this process, um, we've been working over the past several uh, months with the town leadership to, to understand your goals, to test ideas. And um, now we're working this evening to vet those ideas with you all. Um, that is one step in the process. After this step, we will be moving towards public hearings with the RDA's uh, board of directors, uh, who would be ultimately responsible for approving the boundaries in each station area, such that those boundaries can then move on to the state budget committee for ultimate approval. So we're at sort of one step in the process, and you'll see that in just a moment, how that relates to the broader uh, to the broader process. Next slide, please. Next slide. And so um, we started this work about a year ago, uh, and we are uh, in step three of a four-step process. Um, there's a lot of information here, but the bottom line is that um, we've, we've become quite familiar with each station area throughout uh, the last uh, nine to 12 months. And, and we've done that by uh, working with the local leadership. We've done that by doing a lot of mapping, by visiting station areas to get a real hands-on understanding of each station area. And that's led us to community workshops uh, with leadership to understand growth goals, to test ideas, as I mentioned, to really understand if we are interpreting information correctly and if we're on the right track. Uh, because after all, uh, our goals are your goals. So we want to make sure that as the RDA creates these boundaries that they're rooted in the, the, the actual uh, goals of each community. Next slide, please. 
And now we're at this point where we've drafted uh, a boundary for us to share out with you this evening. And that draft boundary is a product of all the preliminary information and data gathering, but it's also a product of our own um, analysis, uh, understanding physical and market realities, um, opportunities and challenges, um, the infrastructure that's in place and what might be needed to kind of create more investment. And so all of that information has sort of uh, uh, put us into a point to share out a draft boundary this evening. Next slide, please. And after tonight, uh, based upon the input that we continue to receive, then we will adjust as necessary. We'll continue to refine uh, the work and then we'll be able to move towards the public hearing with the RDA's uh, board. Uh, next slide, please. And so um, as I begin to describe a little bit about the actual process of the boundary creation, it begins with um, uh, gathering a lot of information that's both quantitative and qualitative. This is where we're, we're using our, our professional skills to interpret uh, assets, um, the context of a community, um, the things that are working really well, where you've suggested you wanna make improvements. We also are, are diving deep into your project uh, planning efforts that you've conducted over the previous years, such as your comprehensive plan and your character-based code. And then we're also looking at specific areas to understand uh, on the ground conditions that are really uh, detailed and unique from area to area. And this is where we get into a lot of analysis about land use, walkability, um, infrastructure, uh, ownership status, acreage. That helps us really understand whether or not uh, the boundary um, should be drawn here or there. And it allows us to make um, more knowledgeable recommendations. Next slide, please. And when we when we craft the boundary, as you'll see in a moment, it is a very uh, um, unique shape and um, it juts out here, it juts out there. It, it has skinny parts and it has wider parts. And the idea is that we're working within, again, your previous planning efforts. And we understand that within that boundary, there are lots of different strategies that will be employed um, to uh, effectuate the kind of growth that you wanna see. And some of that is to simply preserve the strong assets that exist today. Um, sometimes within this community and others, we're looking to strengthen uh, particular areas that are already strong and growing. Other times we're looking to fill in missing pieces. So infill of, of gaps, or maybe there's a vacant land or, or parking lot that's underutilized Sometimes there are great assets that are just not being used. So how can we creatively bring those back into um, the, uh, tools in the community and, and great uh, investments in the community? And other times there might be things like brownfields or, or greenfield sites that are marketable or marketed right now that are good redevelopment candidates. So through the process, we're, we're defining a boundary, but that boundary assumes that many, many, many different kinds of activities can take place. And these are just some of those activities that could take place within the boundary. Next slide, please. And so as I turn it over to my colleague, Aaron Kowalski, who's gonna talk a little bit about the situation in Munster, I just wanted to remind you that the boundary itself is a tool based upon your recommendations as a, as a community. And uh, creating the boundary um, uh, really involves uh, your feedback tonight. So I hope that you're uh, able to provide us with questions that we're, uh, we're, we're glad to answer throughout the course of, of the, the presentation. So with that, um, I'm gonna turn it over to Aaron Kowalski. Aaron? Thank you, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm here today to talk about uh, goals, unique qualities and current conditions and uh, you know, as, as everyone has mentioned previously, you know, we've really looked to understand as much as possible from the town of Munster. And, and that really started with, um, you know, kind of getting on the ground. We were joined by town of Munster officials who took us on a tour of the community. We spent about a whole day in the community looking around at, at all the areas around the station and really trying to understand as much as possible about the community. And, and since that that initial meeting, we have been working very closely with town officials, 
both at a staff level and at a, an appointed and elected level to really understand their goals and, and what they would like to see in the, in the future. So we've started with, you know, their community economic goals, the goals of the community, and, you know, really looking at promoting these six points is kind of key tenets as we're thinking about areas that could be added into a boundary that could yield, um, you know, implementation uh, steps and development that can help the community to achieve these goals. Next slide. The, the town is, um, you know, really fortunate to have good quality planning as well. And, and we've reviewed a lot of those documents. These are from the 2010 comprehensive plan. So, you know, we've, we've looked at incorporating a lot of these areas, for instance, um, the comprehensive plan calls for some redevelopment by the private market over time at the town hall square, right at Ridge Road and, and uh, Calumet Avenue. So some of these areas were really easy for us to add into the process. We really leaned on some of the previous plans throughout the community. Next slide. Also, uh, you know, Lansing Country Club and, uh, you know, looking at the Lake Business Center, these are things that the town over time has long called for. Um, some strategic redevelopment and investment as the private mar market takes interest in these areas. And of course, Calumet Avenue is a major corridor throughout the community. Uh, kind of starting right at the river and then going south to River Road is another area that we think has a lot of opportunity. The community also has aspirations to really build upon um, what is already a pretty good uh, bicycle and, and, and trail network. And, you know, there's a lot of linkages that can be created um, through, you know, the Monon Trail or other trails connecting different parks and neighborhoods in the community. And, and we're looking to emphasize that through this process as well. Munster is also, you know, really fortunate to have recently updated uh, their zoning ordinance. So that we've looked at the 2019 livable Munster character-based code. And I'll tell you that, that this code sets the town up for success in a lot of the areas around the Ridge Road Station area where you'd like to target some of that investment. So uh, the, the town has already taken the steps to really set the stage for the type of development that they like to see around the station. So uh, that really gave us a lot of guidance through this process as well. As Eric mentioned, we went through a pretty in-depth series of both qualitative and, and quantitative, as well as site level analysis through this process. We looked at things like walkability, zoning, we looked at traffic counts and thoroughfares, where roads connect, where they didn't, where the town would like to see roads connect in the future. And we looked at property ownership, both public and private. And we worked with town officials to understand where there could be some opportunities where perhaps in time, some people would like to see investment on different properties, vacant or not. And we've worked to include some of that information as well. So that's led us to, you know, really kind of crafting a boundary. And before kind of I delve into kind of how we arrived at that boundary, I want to give some context. So, you know, we are looking at the Ridge Road station area. So, so really our, our first step was to learn as much as possible from the previous plans and our on the ground research about this area and, and really thinking about the art of the possible, thinking about how through this district boundary and this economic development boundary, we could help the town to achieve their long-term economic development goals in this area. Next slide. And then of course, we looked at kind of the immediate vicinity of the station as well. And a lot of the characteristics of that station, you know, it's a very small format station. So it's, it's different, for instance, than um, the, the Main Street station further south. So as we think about what NICDI has proposed and is, is moving ahead with here, you know, it's, it's a fairly small uh, walkable station by design. So the development that eventually will likely occur around the station really needs to be walkable in nature, embraces kind of the character of the, the really good quality stable neighborhoods that are around it already, uh, which are inherently walkable also. So you're, you know, you're seeing that NICDI is not proposing a huge amount of parking spaces here. And, and really it's uh, from a, a ridership perspective, it's, it's a smaller station as well. It really is meant to be 
kind of that neighborhood station. So we've kept that in mind. Next slide. As we start walking through the process, you know, what we've done here in the next kind of several slides is tried to illustrate how we arrived at some of the conclusions and, and ultimately the boundary. And so we'll take you through kind of this iterative approach. But before we do that, just to remind folks of kind of where the station is and kind of the walkable nature of this area. So we'll start with the boundary. And, and this is a draft boundary. It is over the 320 acres allowed by statute. We'll be working with the town to kind of whittle that down to the 320 acres before we take it to the RDA and really working to include any of your comments as well um, for both opportunities and maybe some areas that, that should not be in that district. But the next series of slides will kind of walk you through how we arrived at this. And we first started with anchors and, and tried to learn as much as possible about you know, where the anchors were in this area. Uh, town officials really helped us to understand that. You'll also see as we walk through this next series of slides that there are some things that are a darker color and you know for instance you may see a dark red or a dark blue those are areas that we ultimately felt had a lot of opportunities to be within that boundary so this slide is looking at major commercial areas mostly along ridge road and calumet avenue and and looking at those properties both public properties and properties and in, in private hands that could see a significant amount of investment in the future By and large part, we wanted to preserve the, the stable residential neighborhoods and really work to enhance those neighborhoods around the station area. I will tell you that there's a real opportunity for continued investment and rehabilitation and new families to move into these neighborhoods. But we have really focused our energy from a redevelopment perspective and looking at what could be within the boundary on some of the multifamily areas um, or condo areas that run along the Monon Trail. And the idea here is that, you know, while there would not likely be redevelopment occurring uh, in the near term, in the long term, some of these apartment complexes could be replaced over time with a newer product that could then benefit this area as we think about trying to build up kind of a walkable area to the station. We also looked at vacant, underutilized, or publicly owned properties. Often this allows us to think through some opportunities for uh, properties that could change hand in the future, or in the case of public properties, maybe an opportunity to leverage a, a, a public asset in a key location to achieve economic development goals of the community. As we discussed, there's a lot of really good planning that's occurred in the town. And you'll see that in green. We've incorporated the areas graphically here as we've started to kind of make this boundary that's a bit irregular in shape and I would say is more of a corridor-based boundary following Ridge Road, the Monon, and then Calumet Ave. We've also called out some additional areas in orange that as we studied them were of interest um, due to nature of ownership or use, as well as potential investments that could occur in the future. So that helped us to arrive at our boundary. So there's a lot of research that went into this, but graphically speaking, this is how we've arrived at that boundary. And, and we, we'd like you to, um, in the Q&A, ask any questions that you might have about kind of how we arrived at this. We're happy to answer those at the end of the presentation. Next slide. Uh, back up one, please. So that gets us to our draft boundary, 327 acres, as I mentioned previously. And, uh, you know, we'll be working to kind of uh, massage this a little bit and edit it. But, you know, uh, this is really what we've arrived at through this process. Next slide. As Eric mentioned, there's also an interaction with the existing TIF district. This is the TIF district in the community as it exists today. And so, you know, as we're, we're thinking about this boundary, we're also thinking about those next steps and how really to uh, position the TIF to 
uh, a lot of function as it does currently, but then also thinking for the future and thinking for those future opportunities of this economic development tool. Next slide. Next slide. Thanks. Uh, with that, I'll turn it back to Eric to talk about complementary community growth. Thanks, Aaron. And uh, for those in the audience, we're only a handful of slides away from uh, the uh, completion of the presentation. So appreciate you uh, sort of sticking with us. Um, but uh, obviously, <clears throat> the boundary is, is one of those um, uh, shapes that you'll want to spend some time looking at, probably studying a little bit more to, to get a, a real handle on, on those edges. And um, as I mentioned, uh, you'll be able to do that at the website, www.nwitdd.com. Um, and also, as Aaron just mentioned, feel free to uh, continue to um, ask questions in the Q&A box here. We're going to collect those in a moment and, uh, and then um, answer those. But um, so much of what we've talked about is um, centered around the things that you've said are important to you um, in previous planning exercises and the way in which you'd like your community to continue to grow and flourish and, and, and be strong. And so um, when we talk about uh, those corridors, in particular Ridge Road, um, these are things that you've, you've suggested in your character-based code are important to you with activated ground floor spaces with great shops and restaurants and businesses and upper floor um, residential areas um, that could really enliven the character of Ridge Road in particular, Calumet as well to a degree. But this is the kind of growth you've, you've um, suggested is important to you and that we certainly would um, see a part of uh, including in the, the TDD boundary that we've presented out. Next slide, please. And then also um, in the areas that sort of follow the Monon and a little bit further to the south and uh, in, in areas around the station itself, we could see, um, you know, strengthening the residential component of your community to a great degree. Uh, there's a great residential fabric that exists today. Um, and as we look along the corridors uh, that are maybe a little more busy than some of the residential street, uh, residential streets, um, we could see other types of housing um, potentially uh, coming into play. These again are things that you've suggested are important to you as a community. Um, so the range of housing could uh, include duplexes and, and, uh, and fourplexes and single family homes and townhomes and condominiums and things like that that already for the most part exist in Munster and could really help to strengthen some of the residential character where this kind of uh, development already occurs. So there's really a broad spectrum of things that you have all suggested are important um, to you and that we certainly support and could envision happening within this boundary over time. Next slide, please. And um, that's all to sort of remind us that um, within the boundary, again, there's no one single type of development that we think should happen across the boundary. We think that the boundary is, is uh, enabling all types of activities to take place. Again, adaptive reuse, preservation of what exists today, strengthening what exists today, um, infilling on underutilized sites and redeveloping where there is the uh, good candidate uh, sites for redevelopment. And all of these things go to your your community goals as you've stated them. Next slide, please. And so just as a reminder, um, what we've created here in our minds, at least hopefully in yours as well, it's not just a boundary. It's really uh, a way to reinvest in a zone that um, aligns with your growth goals. It opens up a new set of tools for um, investment um, and it gives the town uh, more leverage in terms of being able to attract the kind of development that um, you're interested in attracting to Munster. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and so just a reminder, our website is live. There's a lot that you'll be able to learn um, on the website, uh, including 
um, viewing this presentation again, if you'd like, for a second time. Uh, there, there's project specific um, information there, uh, other polls that you can take. So please do visit the website. Um, as the process continues uh, to, to evolve, that website will uh, be maintained and updated. And um, you'll note also on the website, you can peek into other communities and other station areas as well to understand where they're at in the process. And I'll say you're, you're ahead of the game here. You're the first to go in terms of a public engagement session like this. So um, yeah, we appreciate you being the guinea pig tonight, but um, do take advantage of, of interacting with the website. Um, you'll find a lot more information and ways to uh, contact us. Uh, next slide, please. And so with that, um, I do want to um, uh, transition to Q&A, but prior to that, I'll mention a couple of things. Um, our next steps include uh, the following. So right now you may know that there are um, what we call a gallery is installed at Munster Town Hall. You're able to go and visit this gallery and in the gallery you'll see um, much of the information we just um, presented to you um, arrayed across um, I believe seven, seven different um, presentation boards. So you'll be able to peruse at your own pace and take your time to do that in an in-person fashion. You can also take a, a, a survey um, with your smartphone um, while you're viewing the gallery. Again, the website is live. Please do visit the website. We will be, um, just after the Thanksgiving holiday, we will be having a second webinar um, for the town of Munster. This one will be focused on the Main Street Station. And so that'll be December 2nd at 6.30 p.m. Um, please do join us for that one as well. Um, following um, those meetings, uh, this meeting and that meeting, then we'll be able to transition into the RDA board public hearings. Um, those dates and times have yet to be determined, uh, but once they are, those will be announced and published. And then following those hearings, ultimately we'll work towards um, getting to the state budget committee uh, for review of the information and final approval of the boundaries themselves. Um, so with that, again, we really appreciate your, your interest and your participation and, um, and uh, uh, wanting to learn more about our process and our work thus far. I know that we have gathered a handful of, of questions. Um, we're happy to uh, read those off and answer those uh, with the time that we have here. And um, it seems as though we, we have three, maybe four questions that we'll go through. Um, you'll see those up on your screen uh, right now. So um, the first question here, I'll, I'll read. Um, I, I thought the Indiana legislature passed legislation authorizing the RDA to use eminent domain for development projects. Um, no, that is, that is actually not the case. Um, uh, my colleagues with policy analytics, feel free to um, correct me, but um, that is not the case. Uh, the, the legislation does not authorize that um, use for the, uh, for, of eminent domain by the RDA. And the second part to this question is also TIF related uh, to TDD is allows revenues to go to other taxes. Okay, so I think the question here is whether or not the revenue can flow from this TDD to another or from this TDD into a different TIF district that it does not overlap. Um, and that is also not the case, that the revenue collected in this boundary stays within this boundary. And if it does overlap with the TIF, as you saw in, in the case of Ridge Road, there is an overlap in certain areas. That overlap would be uh, a, a, an ongoing dialogue and, and agreement with the town and the RDA as to how those revenues are, are uh, managed. Um, uh, but those revenues would be managed in a way that the TIF obligations are always met. Um, the next question here, uh, hopefully I answered the question for you, Sandra. The next question is, what impact do you anticipate the project to have on uh, existing businesses and residential properties within the TDD and TIF boundaries? We're very uh, excited um, for the TDD uh, boundary and what it would mean for businesses and residential properties. We think there's a tremendous opportunity here to have a positive impact and a uh, very um, real um, 
way to manifest the kind of growth that you want to see as a community. Keep in mind that development is only one aspect of the kind of investment that can occur here. So things like um, new businesses, things like new, new housing, new residential development um, would be one component here. But there's also um, great opportunity for new investment to occur on the infrastructure side. Um, there might be things that you have long considered to be important to you in the community. Maybe it's a street extension, maybe it's a trail, maybe it's an, an open space. All of these things are potential candidates for investment within the TDD boundary, um, much like they would be in a TIF boundary. And these go to improving quality of life for everybody in the community, businesses and residents uh, alike. So we think that there's a tremendous uh, benefit uh, with the establishment of the TDD uh, boundary to, to really uh, positively impact the community in general. And, and Eric, this is Tom. Um, I, I, Sandra, it's a great question. I would also add that one of those first slides that we um, highlighted were, if you look at kind of the existing metro footprint and, and where there's been expansion, um, we kind of highlighted where there, there was a, a varying degrees of, of uh, property increases, but uh, th there, most of them were actually pretty significant over a period of time. So I think that's really something to highlight. And just from a valuation uh, perspective, and you know, just when you think about real estate, this is, I, I think it's fair to say, um, a very positive uh, occurrence for the community that, you know, ge generally speaking, uh, having analyzed outside the Chicago metro area, area this is, would be the kind of development that would, um, would be uh, tran transformational from a, a, an increase in value perspective. I do think on the existing businesses that that's, um, we're th thinking more residential. I would expect the same to be the case on existing businesses, but I don't know to what, ex uh, what extent that would apply. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, that's great. I'm, I'm glad you added that point, Tom. Thank you for that. Uh, the next question here is, does the overall plan include first mile, last mile transportation, such as AV shuttles? And so um, the, the, the uh, work that we're uh, moving through this evening is focused on just the boundaries. So we're really creating the, the boundary in which uh, the investments on the private side and on the public side can occur. Um, this, this effort really is not um, an effort that um, proposes uh, new transportation options or new, new infrastructure or new uh, development uh, per se. This is really about uh, creating the boundary, defining that boundary. Um, from that boundary, once it is approved by the State Budget Committee, the kinds of things that you're interested in seeing in the community are, are possibilities. But this, this project and this process that we're uh, working with you tonight um, about is, is strictly limited to defining the boundary itself. Um, is there a person in contact number for people who want more information and updates as the project advances? The answer to that is yes. If you are on the webpage, um, there is contact information on the webpage uh, for you to uh, continue to in, in, engage with us and to continue to, to stay um, informed. And, and, uh, and uh, so do, do uh, visit the website and, and uh, take advantage of the opportunity there. Um, and somebody did comment here that um, good clarification is that the eminent domain authority does lie with NICD, not the RDA. So um, this work that we're, um, we're presenting this evening is the RDA work uh, for the, the TDD boundaries. And so through the RDA, function, eminent domain is not one of those um, capabilities. Um, so the next question here is for those of us who live within the TDD boundary, will our taxes go up? And I, I might ask um, my colleagues at Policy Analytics to jump in here, but the answer to that is, is um, the TDD boundary just essentially allows the increment, um, tax increment in the boundary to be captured and reinvested in the boundary itself. So it is not a, a new tax. It is not a levy. It is not a, a further, um, uh, uh, you know, is not, is not an imposition on, on businesses or residences.
within the boundary in that respect. It's simply like any, any um, tax policy, it captures the revenue that is building and, and is uh, growing over time. Uh, the next question here is I, I live in Calumet and north of Ridge. Uh, I'm sorry, I live east of Calumet and north of Ridge. Any plans to upgrade this crossing so we could cross this busy intersection diagonally instead of having to cross this intersection twice? Uh, that's true. Many of the busier streets in Chicago allow this. This would make it easier for me to walk to the station. It's a great point. Um, the, the work that we're doing this evening, we've looked at things like that in the community just to get a handle on how to define the boundary and um, things like that. If, that if, if this proposed infrastructure improvement were to be important to the town um, and were to be important in the future growth of, of the community, this, this would be something that could be eligible within the TDD as an investment opportunity. I, I don't know that I have a... Yes. Hey, Jesse. Uh, Whatever, uh, everything Eric said is true and, and you'll be uh, happy to know that the town right now is in the planning process for uh, streetscape improvement for both Ridge and Calumet. Uh, and one of the important things we're looking at both Ridge and Calumet is multimodal transportation and safety options, uh, specifically for bikes and pedestrians. So the question you ask here is going to be addressed in that process that we're working through right now. So we actually had a steering committee uh, update on some proposed concepts the first time that group has seen them, and that's going to wind itself uh, through that process. So that is a great question, and there's a question being worked on by the town right now. Thanks, Dustin. It's a great clarification. Um, so the next, I think this is more of a comment, TDD increment and income tax revenue streams go to RDA, not another taxing district. So um, there's a bit of nuance to that. Um, Bill or David from, um, from Policy Analytics, do you mind uh, maybe adding a little bit of discussion here upon how the increment actually flows? Sure, this is Bill Sheldrake. Um, the, um, the tax increment, the TDD property tax increment, and the TDD income tax uh, increment, those do go to the RDA, at, but the RDA is uh, required uh, in conjunction or collaboration with the town to use those revenues within the district. So that is going to be a collaborative um, discussion with the district, and it will be covered in that uh, memorandum of uh, agreement that uh, you discussed uh, earlier. Thanks, Bill. Um, do we have any further questions? Okay, this looks like a um, comment here. Bill, I might ask you to weigh in on this one as well. This is in the Indiana TIF legislation I read, an RDC cannot exercise eminent domain or enter into a lease or bond issue without approval from the applicable legislative body pursuant to implementing this program. So um, Bill, do you wanna, you wanna clarify how this relates to the RDA and the TDD? Yeah, I'll, I'll try. Um, the uh, comment says an RDC, meaning a Redevelopment Commission, cannot exercise eminent domain or enter into a lease or bond issue without approval from the applicable legislative body. I, I agree with that in the sense that an RDC um, needs to, uh, as it's uh, attempting to issue bonds, it needs to get final approval from the, what, town, city, uh, in some cases, county legislative body. Um, I'm not sure what pursuant to implementing this program means. Um, the, the RDC is not required to, um, uh, to uh, approve the TDD program, but the first clause there talking about uh, an RDC and uh, issuing debt uh, within a TIF uh, I believe that is the case. 
So yes. Thanks, Bill. All right. Um, we have any further questions? We're right at seven o'clock local time. We're very close to seven o'clock. All right, I don't think we've got any further questions. As I mentioned, um, you know, feel free to browse the webpage, ask other questions if you do have them. Uh, you'll see contact information there. Um, there's another opportunity uh, December 2nd to um, hear a similar presentation for the, um, the Main Street Station. So we hope to see you there. If you do get a chance, do please check out the gallery at Munster Town Hall. And um, last but not least, thanks again for uh, being with us this evening. And unless Sherry Ziller or Dustin Anderson have anything else to add, um, I think we'll close the meeting. Yeah, thank you, Eric. I just wanna thank everyone for your time and participation tonight. And we wanna to continue to address your concerns and hopefully after our program tonight, uh, you have a better understanding of the economic development and social benefits um, to this process. And uh, we will be around, we'll continue on with our next steps. So please join us for our uh, upcoming virtual meetings. And uh, I think the Munster uh, Dyer Main Street one would be a good one for you all to attend. Yeah, Justin? I just wanted to remind people, go to northwestindianatdd.com, nwitdd.com and provide your feedback uh, because your feedback can't be incorporated. It can't be heard unless you speak your truth. So please, uh, please participate. Uh, the process is stronger for it. Uh, and if you don't share, we don't know. Uh, so just wanted to reiterate that and thank everybody for making the time uh, in the middle of the week to, to participate in this. Thank you.